Sisters. Hi guys. Well, you have asked and I have listened. I have had so many messages, even over the past year, just about people saying, how exactly do you ride shoulder in? What exactly is the place that you sit? What exactly is the aid? Counter canter, traver, all of those higher level movements, but you know, they're still movements that we all play with. Where exactly do you sit? And what exactly is the aid? So, I have a whole segment now just on that, but I'm doing it in a little bit of a different way. Rather than me cruising around the arena, you try to keep up, pause the screen and have a look. Wessel has helped out amazingly and is actually standing still and I'm moving everything for you so that you can see exactly where to sit. Remember our April competition, 500 pounds up for grabs. Have a look in the description below if you're not sure what I'm talking about, but let's get into it. Hope you enjoy it. Okay guys, so this is shoulder in, okay? Now again, DMA members, shoulder in is basically three track. So you can see his outside front leg is in line with his inside hind leg, inside front legs by itself and outside hind legs by itself. So you've got one track, two track, three track. Okay, but again, that's DMA. So DMA members know what I'm talking about. Everyone else just FYI, so you know where we're at, okay? Now, it's very important that you think about what your movement is. Shoulder in is really about bending the rib cage, okay? So that's what you've got to think about when you're choosing where to sit, okay? So if I stayed just where I was when I'm on a straight line, I would be here, okay? So if you actually have a look here, you see the line of my pants is in line with the saddle, okay? Now that's where I would sit if I was just on the straight line and didn't move, okay? This is where I sit if I sit for the shoulder in. So you see the line of where my zip is, you see where that moves into the middle of the saddle, okay? You'll see that my seat here is seated toward this side, but I'm not hanging there, yeah? Because what I'm not looking for is I'm not necessarily looking for the rib cage on this side to be massively bulging. All I'm looking for is that there's a little bit of flexibility there and that this bit's the same, okay? So you just ever so slightly follow the small side of the rib cage, but it's only a small bit of bend, okay? My feet have exactly the same weight in them. Okay, so even if I'm exaggerating, so let's say I'm trying to get my horse to go into shoulder in, I move ever so slightly like that, he doesn't do anything, or he's falling in all the time, I can exaggerate it and sit over here, which will help him stay on the wall, but also get the shoulder in. However, this is the big key guys, both my feet feel exactly the same in the stirrups. So if I was sitting guys, Normally, as if I'm going on the straight line, I'd be here, okay? And if I'm here, this leg is stopping this rib cage from going where I want it to go, okay? So if I want shoulder in, it's ever so slightly to the inside, but my weight in the stirrups is even. It's exactly the same. If I'm struggling and my horse is, when I go into shoulder in, falling to the inside, yeah, or swinging his quarters out, I'm going to exaggerate that, but again, you see the top of my body doesn't change. The weight in my stirrups is still the same. It's only the space that I'm allowing my bottom. So this is the exaggerated training horses struggling version. Yeah, and you see my bum is quite over, but you see my shoulders look the same. This is correct shoulder in. This is if I was still on the same straight line. But all the time, my legs stay exactly the same, my shoulders stay exactly the same. It's purely just the placement of my pelvis. What? Whoa, we say, we say there for a fair while. That was pretty good at Wessie. Does that all make sense, guys? Do we miss anything there? So that is shoulder in, okay? Regardless of anything, if you're cantering, if you're trotting, if you're walking, that's how you position it. The most important thing to remember is the weight in your feet always stays the same. Doing that, isn't it? 
it amazing? So I hope you're enjoying this, guys. It's so amazing to see it in real life where you can just stand there and actually just have a look. It's really cool, isn't it? So now let's pop into our dressage mastery program and listen to some real questions in real time from some of our viewers. Hope you enjoy it. It took a while for it to click in. For myself, it was the contact is with the thigh. The knees aren't squeezing. It's all with the thigh and the lower leg remains still or at least independent of the seat as it's moving. Um, so I just wanted to double check that. Yeah, so that. that's probably a good, so we haven't said, that's a bit vague for you still, and this is why it's quite hard. So um, we have a bit of a saying here, which it's called the 80-20 rule. So basically that 80% of your weight is in your actual feet. Okay. Not your legs, not your seat, your feet. So just like you're standing on the ground. Yeah? Perfect, because for some reason the lines got crossed in the videos and I was thinking it was supposed to be more weight in my stirrups. And I was like, mm, yeah. In, <laughs> in, in your feet. In your feet. Yeah, yeah, which is your stirrup exactly. still. Stirrups feet basically yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah exactly. In your stirrups. Exactly. I've been taught to carry that weight. Like you say, it's, I say seat, but it's your thighs in your seat, but like yeah I know what you mean you're independent you're, in, I know what you're you mean. independent right it, yeah. it comes on it comes off as it needs my horse so it is in the, it, the independence is um the re, is 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 the byproduct of of having the 80 20 rule so 80 percent of your weight is in your feet it's almost like you um <clears throat> are straddling a small pony if you imagine if you could touch the yep. ground and you've got to straddle that small pony keep your feet on the ground but then still touch him with your thighs and your bottom as well yep yeah that's what you should be doing when you're riding a horse so you do so the 20 percent of the leftover weight is contactable but don't forget it's 20 percent over your thighs and your bottom so okay. that's it's a very small amount to be spread over the saddle. It's in your weight. So then if you watch those people that if a horse bucks, they don't seem to get influenced by the horse at all. They're the people that are riding like that because if you've got 80% in your legs, you have complete independence of the horse. If the horse starts to buck, you just stand up a little bit. <laughs> and, and they don't buck you off anymore. Well, um, uh, well I was going to laugh at it, I don't get bucked off, but <clears throat> yeah. So you get the idea if they spook real quick, you know, some people yeah. have, if they jump really go sideways, you notice that the rider just stays with them and you think, how is that possible? And then another rider gets left over here. It's the rider who's got the weight in the feet because the weight in the feet, they, they don't, they, 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 what the horse does doesn't influence them at all. Um, and that's how to remember it. So if you think 80% weight in my feet, 20% of the rest, last 20% is just contact with the saddle that you're never, and again, think of that analogy of a tiny little pony, you're standing on the ground and you, you're just tall enough that you could stand on the ground but have a little bit of weight on him, but you're still standing on the ground. So again, this is why I always talk about leg yield being so important, okay? So this is also leg yield. Have a look at his legs here. It could be mistaken for a big four track shoulder in, okay? The difference is that the quarters are out. And again, this is a bit DMA. Um, so again, really DMA members know what I'm talking about, but I feel like I have to tell you anyway. So you get some free DMA stuff here, guys. But basically people say to me, how do I know that it's the quarters out or the shoulders in? Because ultimately there's a wall here, it looks the same. Look at his body. You see that his rib cage is quite straight. Yeah, so even though his quarters are, his shoulders are in or his quarters are out, his rib cage is quite straight. And that's the difference between pushing his quarters out or bringing his shoulder in, okay? What is the main difference between creating this with your seat or creating a shoulder in? A shoulder in is like you're pinching the rib cage on the inside and just getting it to be a little bit contracted. Okay, a leg yield on a circle or a leg yield on a straight line is actually that you're trying to get him to almost push his quarters out on a pivot. So rather than him doing this on a shoulder in, he does this on a leg yield a little bit more, okay? So what do you do as a rider? 
it's just a more pronounced weight to the inside because you're trying to get the whole horse to be out here, all his quarters to be out here. So you want to create space for that. Okay. So when again, you think of that leg yield, really sit away from the direction of travel so that he has no choice but to push his quarters out. Okay. So that's very much how the difference between a shoulder and a leg yield. It's the pronouncedness that you sit to the inside. Travair guys. Now, just to be very clear, again, this is a bit DMAE. Travair is actually four tracks, okay? And it should be an even space with all the legs. So if you look at the, the, the space between the two front legs, the space between the two hind legs, and then actually the space between the outside hind and the inside front is all about the same. So that's how big the four track should be, okay? Because four track's a little bit hard to measure, isn't it? That's actually how big it should be, okay? So again, bit DMAE, but need to do it. Position-wise, now position-wise, the rib cage is actually on the outside very, very big. So actually, the positioning of your body is not dissimilar to a leg yield. You need to put quite a lot of weight down this inside um, pelvis. Remember again, it's not that you're lighter or leaning or heavier or leaning. Both the weight is even in both seat bones, sorry, in both feet. However, the weight down the inside of your, of your pelvis is really allowing this to be open. Okay, so it's more about where the pelvis is seated, seated rather, versus actual weight okay so feet are the same shoulders are the same however you need a lot of rib cage to be out here and this is very hard for Wessel not to move so again have a look at his legs okay and you can see where they are okay and then you have a little bit of a think about what the rib cage is going to look like now I'm going to try to get him to do this and not hop, not move but that's the leg shape if we then make the shape shape, your outside leg comes back a little bit, but it's not to actually push the quarters out. It's again, just to create a little bit more bend so that this rib cage here is not just flat. It actually gets, what? Good boy. <laughs> it actually gets a little bit of a curvature to it, okay? So you put a little bit of weight or a little bit of pelvis to the inside, similar to a leg yield. Your inside rein thinks to the shoulder to stay up a little bit. Your outside rein stays even. <laughs> we tried, guys. I may have to walk this a bit. And then your outside leg, good boy, you got this. It's very, very, very technical if Wes can actually do this. That's actually not bad, is it? He's a little bit off, but to ask him in halt, that's not so, it's a bit hard. But you see here, so you keep your weight here, your outside leg is bent a little bit. So you see here, my leg is free. It's not holding him on there, but it does go back, which gives this bit of the rib cage that little bit of extra curve. So sitting to the inside, just like the leg yield, allows the rib cage to go out. And then your leg back, but not on, allows this bit of the rib cage to bend a little bit more. And if they're a little bit not there, it's a come over, come over, come over. Yeah. And what that does is give you that little bit of extra back end of the rib cage. And that's what gives you an epic, epic, epic score. Okay. Everyone clear on that one? This is exciting, isn't it? It's all breaking down. And guys, if you can do this, you can do half pass. That is what's so brilliant about it. So if you can get all of these right now, all of a sudden you can already do a pirouette because you know how to control the shoulder, you know how to control the travers, you can do a half pass because all it is is a travers on a diagonal line. You can do a working pirouette, which is again just a travers on a circle line. If you get this stuff epic, the next part isn't so difficult. It really is that easy. It is absolutely brilliant. If you get this so you totally, totally understand it, the next level is just fly and fly and fly and fly and fly. It's super, super exciting. Okay, so that's Travair. Next thing, we're gonna look at Ronver. So then guys, we are in Ronver. Now, if I can get him to hold this, we're doing very, very well. Have a look at the legs first. Now, if you looked at those legs first, you'd go, oh yeah, that's just shoulder in. 
okay? What is Ronvere? Ronvere, people always think it's quarters out. It is not quarters out. It's basically a back to front shoulder in, okay? So think, right a shoulder in, and then you just change the bend, okay? So if you have a look at his legs, that's how they are. When he's doing a shoulder in, this is the small of the rib cage, this is the big one. When he does a rond there, his legs stay in the same spot, except those centers of rib cage change, okay? So I wanna keep the rond there. This rib cage is gonna be smaller, so I'm gonna put a little bit of weight to the inside. However, I don't want him to fall in. So I'm, it's ever, ever, ever so little, ever, ever, ever so slight, okay? So the tiniest little bit of pelvis on this side to say this is the smallest rib cage. Come on, Jesse. And then, good boy, this arm says to the horse, I want you, you I want you to look this way. This arm says, stay here. Oh, don't move. Oh, oh, good boy, good boy, good boy. And my weight sits here, which says this is the small rib cage. Similarly to when we did over this side again, the travers, our new inside leg goes slightly back ever so slightly, but again, not holding. It's there, it hovers, our weight is still firmly in our foot. And if we feel he needs a bit of balance, it's a balance, 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 not a balance and hold, okay? So you can easily go from, Trav from Ronver to, ah! <laughs> let me try and get back at again. You can keep it running. Oh, oh, he's so good, isn't he? This is very, very hard for a horse in hold. You can easily go from Ron Bear to shoulder in to Ron Bear. I'm exaggerating so you can see. Woo! Don't move worse. Ah, good boy. To shoulder in. Ah, don't move worse. He's like, oh, what do you want me to do, guys? Leg and take over, baby. Good boy. You got it. <laughs> to Ron Bear. Yeah, he's like, oh my God. To shoulder in. And you see, it's all just the positioning of your body that, cha whoa, 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 that changes it from one to the other. And of course, he's a bit deep. Of course, he's not through, but you're not supposed to do this in halt. I'm just doing it so you can see it. So you see a complicated movement. Shoulder in. Don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Don't move. You got it, get away. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Oh, you're such a good boy. <laughs> To Ron Bear, to shoulder in, to Ron Bear, to shoulder in, to Ron Bear, and I'm really exaggerating it. It's so simple. It really isn't that difficult. You're amazing. You're amazing, beautiful. It is not really that difficult. And as soon as you understand how your body moves like that, it all just flies through for you. Right guys, so then you've all, what, we've, what have we done now? We have done shoulder in, travers, leg yield on a circle or a straight line, and ronvert, okay? The next thing is counter canter. Now, counter canter is very, very simple. You just need to know which is the leading leg. So which leg you need to stay off, okay? So if he is in counter canter going in this direction, which is the leading leg, guys? Hmm, which is the leading leg if we're going in this direction? This one. So the outside hind is always the leading leg. So if you're in counter canter, it's gonna be the inside hind for your feeling, okay? Does that make sense, guys? Are we all there? So outside hind is the leading leg. If he's cantering in this direction, cantering through the wall, that's actually the outside hind. Okay, so with your seat, if your horse knows how to do it, it's very similar to shoulder in. You just create a literally teensy bit of space over here so that this leg can always lift up, okay? However, if you're learning the counter canter a little bit, then you wanna make sure that you give that loads and loads of space. However, if you lean like this, he's also going to fall. So you must be very, very, very cautious that when you, even though you are giving space here, he's saying an all four legs, Wes? No. 
Wessie, stand up, Duncan. There we go. They can't see if you're leaning on one leg, Wessie. There we go, good boy. So if, he's still not standing on four legs. There we go. So if you try to give space over here, you must think give space, but my even legs need to be straight. Okay, so even legs, even shoulders need to be straight. I'm creating room here, okay? If they're really, really struggling, you can even think of like tilting your hip like that. So there's almost space underneath here. Equally though, you've got to keep those shoulders and those feet exactly in line. So you see, I can even lift and twist a little bit and create some actual space there, but I'm not able to do this. It's very important that you don't do that or this, yeah? You've got to keep that evenness. With your outside leg, again, you can do a little bit. If they're struggling, you can hold it back a bit, but be aware, if you keep it back all the time, when you get to one tempies, you're going to struggle. <laughs> so ideally, you want to keep that counter canter with your seat and that you can keep putting your leg back into a neutral position. Okay, so otherwise you're kind of asking for travers all the time. So it should be, I'm in canter, now neutral leg. Okay, when they're babies, sure, you can have it back a little bit, but don't hold it there. Again, guide it with the rhythm, with the goal of always getting it back into neutral. Okay, and that's again, beginning with the end in mind, so that you're able, good boy sweetheart, so that you're able to ride the movements all the way through to Grand Prix. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. It was such a fun episode to create. Remember, subscribe below, and we'll see you next time. Bye!